So today I'm here at uh, Dan Eisner's uh, office, a uh, recent Dragon Stand entrepreneur, contestant, whatever you call it. So, and he got a deal in the Dan. Uh, but uh, since then we have uh, learned that there are some new developments. But uh, before we talk about those uh, interesting stuff, let me ask you Dan. So uh, I f we first, first met in uh, April. And uh, tell, tell us a little bit about that journey. You auditioned in April, I think you pitched in June, and then now the show is aired in uh, uh, November. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the journey, like you said, started off uh, in April. Uh, it was actually very quickly after that they contacted me and, and uh, asked me to come to Toronto. I think the following week, in fact. Um, they asked me to pick a day. I picked a Saturday because I don't like I have work every other day of the week. Mm -hmm. So I picked a Saturday, flew out, and uh, <clears throat> flew in on Friday night. Flew out on Saturday, Saturday night, and pitched on uh, on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was pretty intense. Uh, the the my, I could feel my heartbeat. Uh, Even thinking first, about yeah, the, the pitch yeah, itself. Yeah, I feel my heartbeat when I walked down those stairs. I could you could feel your heart beating. Um, mm -hmm. Every beat for the first three minutes, mm -hmm. um, but the actual pitch only lasted about 22 minutes. 22 minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a script. So some some lo last longer and some last shorter. So yours is 22 minutes, like yeah. from walking in and then you leaving the dent. I have the script, so I know uh, for right, that right. time. So uh -huh. I can see. Uh, so and and they really did. I think the show really did capture the presentation quite well. Uh, there's only maybe a few things they cut out. A lot of what they cut out was uh, the dragons uh, talking to each other about mm -hmm. the business. More than Give us a sample of that. Like what, what kind of things? Well, they they often were talk. They're explaining to each other oh, okay. what mortgage brokers do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and so I never really said that, but uh, they actually told each other. Uh, right, right. So behind some behind the scenes stuff. So, so who is the knowledgeable uh, dragons that actually ex were doing the explaining? Oh man. Do you remember? Try my if not, don't uh, worry. Arlene and uh, Robert were explaining it to Jim uh, and Lawrence, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I right, remember right. That's right. So Arlene and who? Uh, and Robert. And Robert. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, but, and it actually brings up a topic. I mean, sometimes it really takes the dragons, uh, expert, uh, like one or two of the dragons really have to know the area to, in a sense, to help the others, right? Sure. If, if none of them know anything about the business. Yeah, no, you know, it's, the it's business, scary to get involved in a business you don't even know the industry around. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Right, right, right. So how long have you been doing this? Well, I got my license back in 2003. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really was not active. I was only doing part time. Um, in fact, I actually. So you got your license after your MBA or like uh, a couple of years after my MBA? A couple, a couple years after. Um, and uh, I, I actually had a full time job. So I, I decided to do this, open this store, mm -hmm. and I quit my job to do it. Mm -hmm. On your own? Like, do you have a partner in the business or like you decide one day, okay? Look at the costs and look at the rents and uh, equipment expenses. Okay, I, I wasn't mulling it over for quite a while, so it wasn't just out of, uh, off the cuff. But right, right. but it was. Uh, I felt that the timing was right for that sort of thing. Yeah, in Calgary particularly, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of response. So I got the lease. So one week I was working at my old job. Mm -hmm. Next week I was working here. Right. So this is location since right. This is the location. Yeah. This is the location. So, sorry, since 2003? No, no. Uh, this location only been opened uh, uh, a year ago, May. So a year like ago, May. 16 months now. Oh, okay, so you opened, like you started this whole thing 16 months ago. Yeah, and look like this. 16 look months, look like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, wow. So, did it start with, with just you, or you have already no, hired, hired a someone. few people? Right off the bat, I hired. Mm -hmm. Is it the same number of people we have now, or? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Like three? Do you have? Yeah, three? yeah. In including yourself, yeah, including myself. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you have another Better people. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> the, the quality is improved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, yeah. I mean, look at the office. Like this is this is neat. Like uh, I'm going to take some footage of uh, the office. Um, so now, uh, talk a little bit about uh, how the deal, like 
I don't want to use the fall part, but it, it's during the due diligence process that the, it, diligence it didn't, the deal didn't close, right? It, even right after doing the deal, I was apprehensive about actually going ahead with the deal. I was always on mm -hmm. that fence. Mm -hmm. The due diligence process. Was it because of the money or the the percentage you end up have to you have to give up? Well, it's, all that, that you, it's you, a combination you, of both. You mm -hmm. know, more money would make me more comfortable, less percentage uh -huh. would make me more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. One or the other. Mm -hmm. um, the due diligence process took a lot less time than I actually anticipated. Oh really? Um, it was done. Uh, well, they review financials. They speak to referrals. Review all my contracts, so on and so forth. Um, that was done by the end of July. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they only started in the beginning of July and they finished oh, by the okay. end of July. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty quick. It's they were actually pretty quick, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, throughout yeah. the month of August, uh, they gave me to the end of August to kind of sign the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I was apprehensive and I did my own due diligence. Mm -hmm. um, and I went what back. What kind of things do you look into? Well, I wanted to talk to some of the other investors. Uh, other investments they've made. I uh -huh. want to see what type of commitments, management commitment, do they give to those oh, okay. companies. Right. So I spent uh, spent some time doing whatever I can there. It was hard to f to to get the num names and numbers of people, uh -huh. uh, but I did the best I can. Um, and uh, I went back to them with a few suggestions to kind of hold their feet to the fire in mm -hmm. regards to that. Like put those terms in the contract, yeah. right into the contract yeah, that exactly. you're going to sign. Exactly. Mm. But that, 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 no, that didn't happen. So, um, so at the end of August, I told them I did not want to go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you regret that? Uh, like some people say, that's a lot of money. But then some other people say, hey, good for you. So what, what, what's your view on? Okay, I'll tell you what I think. Yeah? I just, as, as we were just talking here, I just got an email from a, from someone I went to Ivy. My oh, you, you went to Ivy. Mm. Um, uh, and and <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen her since 2001. Uh -huh. She says, uh, I watched the show, very impressed, both your presentation and response to their questions. Uh, I'm glad that you decided not to go ahead with the deal. So, so you mm -hmm. can see, so, yeah, I, I know I really haven't regretted it. Uh, I, I've been finding locations with or without them, I, mm -hmm. I, and I really honestly believe that finding those locations would have been purely my responsibility and they would not have helped that. And my biggest barrier to growth, mm -hmm. and every business should know what, that, what their barrier to growth right. is, was not cash. Mm -hmm. It was finding new locations. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really think they're going to add any value in that way. Mm -hmm. so but what else would you get from them? Like, what do you expect from them? Um, like location, you said would be your that, job. That's my right? primary yeah. reason. Now I have an MBA. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly know how to manage this store. I mm -hmm. certainly have the skills on the mortgage mm -hmm. brokering side. So I have accounting knowledge. I have marketing knowledge. I wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't need the business knowledge. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking for that from them. Mm -hmm. But I was looking for uh, uh, inf guidance on building a brand. Oh, right, so brand building. Yeah, brand building. Mm -hmm. And two would have been uh, finding more locations mm -hmm. with, with their context and all that. And that I wasn't getting that sort of mm -hmm. vibe from them that that, that was actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe their, their name and recognition in the industry? Their name right? and recognition? Mm -hmm. Would that help or is, is it know. because it's so different of an industry? If that Kevin stands up on, on TV and says, I use True North Mortgage, oh, okay. right, right. Would, would that add value? M maybe it would, but mm -hmm. is it worth half the company? Because I could probably p pay some hockey player to say the same thing. Uh -huh. uh, I have a lot less than half the value of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. So I didn't think I would be worth it. Uh, so it's sort of, uh, 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 what you have to pay and what uh, you end up yeah. getting, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and that, mm, right. Okay, so yeah, I mean, like uh, now, now we're here in November. Um, w looking at the whole thing, uh, what thing? What are the things that you learn from uh, this whole experience? And I suppose maybe shed some light for future Dragon Stands uh, uh, entrepreneurs, like when they prepare for the pitch or during uh, during the pitch, or and maybe even afterwards when they had a deal and yeah. What are some of the key things? If you're going to pitch your business, mm -hmm. you got to know what your strengths are, and what your what what the strengths of the business are, and what the weaknesses are, and you got to nail and you got to work those down to numbers. Mm. So 
if it's going to be sales, if it's going to be margins, if it's going to be uh, market size, you've got to know those numbers and really be able to relate those numbers. You've got to bring it down to the common base, which is dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so I see a lot of pitches who have a good idea, but they haven't really done a, a good job of making it, relating it to a business model. How are we going to make money? How fast can we make money? Uh, and so on and so forth. And, and you got to know your weaknesses. Don't hide your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. But you got to know... How Hiding you your weakness would be even worse, right? Yeah. I mean, 20 minutes down the road and they ask you, whoops, yeah. oh, that's a bad thing. And, we saw <laughs> and why that, did you mention that? And we saw that with the, the, uh, the uh, corn meal guy. Oh, yeah, the, the patent. Right? If he yeah. had said right up front, I don't own the patent, but I own it from North America, but right. I'm negotiating rights for the rest of it, or, or something to that effect, at least he would have said it at least it's on the table. It'd be up that, on the table, yeah. right. And they wouldn't have felt that they were lying to him. Mm-hmm. Um, because as may, I don't think it was a bad idea. Um, so, you know, know your weaknesses, know how to respond to weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, the due diligence process. Now, uh, if an entrepreneur got so lucky, or, well, it's not luck. I mean, they, they work hard for it. If they got to the stage, what what would you suggest on the, the your takeaway on the due diligence okay, due process diligence. for people that like may will be brand new to them? Uh, you got the reason why due diligence went so smoothly is because I already had financial statements ready prepared. So they asked me, and I give it to them the next day. I had a business plan ready prepared, which I gave them, handed them to the next day. They wanted a list of my receivables. I have that. One of those my mm. suppliers. I have. You got to have. It, they wanted a budget. I already, I already, I always use a budget, so I was just giving my old budget. Mm-hmm. Um, and they wanted forecast. I create forecasts anyway. So you mm-hmm. gotta have your, you gotta have your numbers prepared because that's what they'll, that's what they're gonna look at, and that's what they're gonna take very seriously. Furthermore, really do not hide anything in that due diligence process because if you come, if you say, look, this month is gonna be bad for revenue. They will respect that far more than if they discovered after the fact, mm-hmm. and they will discover. It. Mm-hmm. Right, and you you have a section on risk and other stuff too, right? It's part part of your business plan. Do I have a section on risk? Yeah, as part of my business plan. Yeah, business risk. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's you know. Um, What's your take on it? I suppose that you could business risk. Yeah. Well, every business has some sort of risk. That's why. It's, there's a rate of return that mm-hmm. um, if you're able to w- one of the reasons that Dragons really liked mine is not because I have a I don't have a big brand i so you don't have a what? I don't have a big brand I want to mm-hmm. have a big yeah, brand yeah yeah I mean yeah uh, I don't have a patent by any stretch no no yeah um, are there other mortgage brokers? there's about a thousand in Calgary mm-hmm. alone yeah so there's, there's certainly no no, no barrier uh, no, there, there are a lot of people there already yeah, it's yeah, not like yeah. barrier entry <laughs> they're here uh, and so I knew my so if I went to them before I opened the store, mm-hmm. they would have turned me down flat. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. In fact, I would have turned me down. Yeah. But after a year, I was able to show the numbers, show the profits. That's what got them. I knew that was my strength. That's why I had to lead with my numbers. Mm-hmm. What's the risk? Well, every year I'm in business, the risk goes down. Mm-hmm. Because you can see future and dealing with varying mm-hmm. uh, are, are, Did I tell them the risk? Yeah. Of mm. course, I told them mm-hmm. what risks there are, right. what potential there are. Most of my risks are more environmental rather than internal risks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but not within the company, yeah. but, but within the, the economy and whatnot. Yeah. And and a question on that: some people raised this, and I have the same question. Uh, not knowing the brokerage industry yeah. and whatnot, uh, mortgage brokerage industry well, how is it like? Is the housing slowdown in, in Calgary or in the uh, in in Canada? Is it does it affect your business or it doesn't matter? I mean, people still will refinance the mortgage. Like, what's your take on it? I mean, I'm I'm not an expert. Well, I don't do any uh, subprime or or B business or bad credit business mm-hmm. now anyway. So subprime market in the U.S., even if it comes to Canada, it's not really going to hurt me. When I do talk to the brokers who do do the subprime, they're not even complaining. Although some of their funding has dried up, it's allowed them, it makes their, their role that much more important. Because if someone has bad credit and they want to get a mortgage, they have to use a mortgage broker now, whereas before they may have been able to find a lending themselves. So mm-hmm. the mortgage brokers are actually doing better than ever mm-hmm. in the face of the subprime thing. Now in the A market, which is what I operate in, uh, where I do a lot of purchases, the slowdown in the, the values of the houses in Calgary 
maybe it makes the mortgages slightly smaller, mm -hmm. but the number of people actually buying houses is still consistent. Mm -hmm. It's because people just are buying for less. Okay. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. For the more, even my percentage of mortgages that close in Calgary, probably less than half percent come, come through me. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if the industry, is, I'm not, I'm not 80 percent of the market. Mm -hmm. so You're not taking a big chunk of the market. Yeah, yeah. So I have so much more market I can mm -hmm. get, even if the 10 percent decline in the amount of mortgages being done, big deal. I could grow my business from half a percent to one percent, and mm. so it will be. So if I hear you right, you still have a lot of room to grow. Oh. I mean, you 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 just a sm you're a small player sure. now, and it, the slowdown have some impact uh, overall. But it, it's not you can work hard to actually make more get yeah. more business than yeah, you can yeah. lose with this overall. concept and growing like that. Yeah, I'll capture mm -hmm. far more market share even if the total overall market slightly declined. I'm, I'm, that doesn't doesn't scare me at all. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So yeah, well, it looks like you have a good deal here. So I'm going to um, take some. Well, it's great. To me. It's great talking to you, uh, Dan, today. And uh, thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you.